1973, Britain ceded the responsibility of the postal systems of the Trucial states to the emirs of those states. The Trucial states are the emirates that later on united to become the United Arab Emirates. When that happened, an American philatelic hustler named Finber Kenny took the opportunity to create a number of editions of stamps specifically aimed at the locative collector's market bearing the names of those states. As an example, I will discuss the contact with the Emirate of Fujairah, but other Emirates had similar contacts. Kenny had a contact with the government to handle the day-to-day -day mail operations in those states. He established an exclusive franchise and a separate company to be designated the Stamp Agency of Fujairah. The agency separated between the stamps produced for postal use and those for the production of publicity and philatelic sales revenue. The agency would submit the designs to the government and revision had to be submitted within one month only. And they had to have a good reason to do so. This was a lucrative deal for the Trucial states, especially that they barely had any source of revenue except for Dubai who had stock oil. The agency guaranteed to the government a minimum annual net revenue of 300,000 rupees in the first year and 700,000 rupees by the fifth year. 600,000 rupees in 1964 are 40 and a half million in 2022, which is equivalent to about $550,000. Later, the deal became about 125,000 Qatari Dubai Rial, which adjusted for inflation today becomes about a million and a half US dollars. The stamps that Kenny produced for philatelic revenue have topics that are completely irrelevant to the true seal states. They were represented in bright colors and extravagant designs, although not always. Topics such as space exploration, art from Europe, heads of state of Western countries such as France or the USA, and even sports events that could never have happened in those states back then, like the Winter Olympics. These stamps were never and would have never been used in the true seal states to send mail. They are collectively called dune stamps or dunes. There are almost no stamp dunes. Most of the stamps were produced directly and canceled. The postmark is part of the stamp design and is printed at the time of production. They are not hand stamped. The back also does not have any gum as these were never intended to be placed on any mail items. What you see right now is a photomicrograph of a dune stamp. And this is a stamp that was canceled with a rubber stamp. Notice the difference. In the hand-stamped example, there's an inconsistency in the application of the ink. This is normal and it's very expected. Moreover, there's this groove from where the actual rubber of the cancel touches the paper. Notice how the printed letter O and the printed cancel are almost identical in the dune stamps. These were printed using offset lithography, and this is a topic that I will discuss in another video. Kenny had produced stamps with topics that would attract collectors, and these stamps made their way into stamp packets sold by dealers. Packets like a thousand worldwide stamps. The problem was that they were produced in such high quantities that this makes a dune stamp today almost worthless, and they are hated by many collectors. And the reason they are hated by many collectors is because they were produced to defraud the entire business. They were produced entirely so that collectors would buy them and collect them and make money off collectors. And this is not what philatelists like. There were, of course, real stamps that were issued for mailing purposes, but they were not as flashy as the Dune stamps. Even when the deal was later revoked in 1970, Finbar Kenny still released several stamp sets and sold them directly to collectors and dealers. The ruler of Fujairah issued a statement denouncing this fraud. On December 2nd, 1971, Six of the Emirates decided to unite in what is known now as the United Arab Emirates. And later in 1973, they began issuing their own postal stamps. The first set that was issued had very culturally appropriate designs. The flag, the national emblem, and cultural heritage sites. You can find many specimens of those stamps cancelled with a real postmark. Today, the Emirates produces its own postage stamps with stunning examples and topics. By far my favorite of the UAE issues is the one that features the Misbar al-Amal or the Mars probe that was recently launched. And not only because it has a very nice design, but also because of what it symbolizes. The true seal states were not alone in the stamp game. Many other countries tried to take advantage of collectors and started issuing stamps that were pre-canceled or canceled to order stamps. There are several countries from Eastern Europe, Latin America, or Southeast Asia that have CTO issues, and of course, the Soviet Union. Unlike dunes, CTO stamps have a real postmark. 
most of the times. This postmark is usually applied on the corner of the stamp. This is not to damage the picture. It's usually the postmark of the country's capital city and it's applied very well. This is the telltale sign. A very clear corner postmark that is identical on all other stamps. The other sign is that they still have the original gum on the back even though they have been cancelled. A truly cancelled stamp that was used in the mail should not have any gum on its back. Topics usually include everything from sports, especially the Olympic Games, to flora, fauna, even dinosaurs. CTO stamps like dune stamps are usually frowned upon by philatelists and judges would deduct points in competitions if they are used. So let me know what you think about dune stamps and CTO stamps in the comment below. If you like the video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you again with another video and more information.